Okay, folks, uh, welcome to our uh, weekly uh, VectorVS webcast. Uh, we've got a record crew in the room. Uh, it's been a wild morning. Uh, as you all know, uh, OPEC have had a serious falling out and uh, the uh, price of uh, crude has fallen through the floor this morning uh, and has fallen right back to that support level uh, of the last two major lows. Uh, and that has uh, caused the whole of London to come back. Uh, and at the minute, uh, the S&P futures are limit down. So I have no idea what's going to happen this afternoon. Uh, and uh, so before we make a, a start, uh, hi, Jill, how are you doing? Before we make a start, I've got to put up the VectorVest disclaimer. Uh, the disclaimer uh, pretty much says that I'm not allowed to give one-on-one -on -one financial advice. I'm allowed to talk about those shares that I hold myself, but I have to make it very clear that although those may be suitable for me, they may not be suitable for you. Okay. And as you've seen over the weeks and years, uh, I tend to have a little bit far too much at times in commodity stocks, uh, which get hammered in times like this. So just uh, be very careful. Uh, so uh, US markets, Roy tells me, are going to open about 7% down. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's for sure, Roy. Hello, Bill. How are you? Hope you're well rested after your trip, sir. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we've got the American uh, time changed uh, very early. Uh, ours won't change here in the UK until the end of a, uh, end of March. So it has got this three-week uh, uh, difference on this occasion. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to go up. That's the uh, the futures market. That's the trading view chart. And that's the sell-off that we had last night, folks. Uh, I was actually thinking here that that'd be a good place to short the market. And then when I had a look at it this morning, early, well, maybe last night, in fact, uh, that uh, all had, in fact, dropped. That happened, uh, folks, in a minute, just at the open. So uh, that's what's happened this morning. And this is what... Uh, uh, a 1300 point drop uh, and I think you all know about that and we've seen it in our own accounts. So uh, uh, let's look at something uh, that we can, can hopefully uh, make some sense of. So the UK market folks uh, in uh, lots of red, uh, every measure on VectorVest is down uh, from the shortest term measure to the longest term measure and that is the VectorVest composite. Uh, and as you can see, that confirmed call arrived uh, uh, some weeks ago. All right. So uh, that did a reasonable job in getting us out. In fact, in the UK market, uh, the confirmed call is based on the MTI. Uh, and in the uh, US, it's based on the buy-sell ratio. And the MTI did a very good job. Now, in two weeks' time, uh, we've got a guest speaker today, Steve, from our Oxford group. But in two weeks' time, uh, we've got Carwin uh, from the Gower Peninsula, no less. And uh, uh, Carwin's going to talk to us about how to interpret uh, market breadth. And certainly, this running up here on virtually no breadth was a, a warning signal that something was awry. So uh, we'll look forward to that in a couple of weeks. So uh, did a reasonable job. And these confirmed call signals have to be taken very seriously. And certainly, uh, if you do get a confirmed call down, you should not be buying any more stocks uh, uh, until uh, that changes. So as we look at this market today, every darn thing is down from short term to long term. The DEW did a, a better, uh, got us out uh, a little bit earlier. And again, the DEW, uh, absolutely no sign at all of any form of turn. So no sign uh, of a turn from a medium term uh, trading system like the DEW at all. Um, and we could easily have much, much more downside here. There is the uh, compass of the longer term view. Uh, and clearly, uh, it's going to be at that 78% retracement, at least when the market, in fact, uh, uh, finishes today. So uh, and maybe it'll get down to that low. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so uh, far, far too early to be doing anything. There's no doubt that markets are incredibly oversold. I can't remember seeing them uh, any more oversold based on the MTI and the buy-sell ratio in my experience with VectorVest. But nevertheless, folks, uh, we need to sit and wait until we get some confirmation, even via the primary wave for the most aggressive traders of a turn. 
This is the most serious and fastest sell-off that we've had. And ladies and gentlemen, I sat down with uh, old charts. And in terms of the size of the sell-off and the velocity of the sell-off, there's only one sell-off that's bigger and higher velocity since stock markets began. And that was in 1915 when the Germans suspected that there was uh, armaments on the Lusitania and in fact sunk the Lusitania. So uh, that's the only time that markets have fallen as fast uh, as has happened over the last uh, couple of weeks. So uh, a very serious situation, a ser situation that has to be, uh, I, I know that many people have been uh, asking me uh, about getting in uh, and what they should be buying. Uh, but nevertheless, in my humble opinion, I am conservative, there's no doubt about that. We we need to wait for, even the most aggressive traders sh should sit and wait for at least the primary wave to turn up. I know doing nothing is much, much more difficult than it would seem. I think that there are other people out there, for example, David Smith up in Crew uh, suggested a couple of weeks ago that in this environment, we should be taking advantage of uh, this uh, pullback to actually top up in shares with outstanding fundamentals. And that is certainly a trading plan and probably an exceptionally good trading plan. It's not my trading plan, but nevertheless, uh, if uh, that is your trading plan, uh, you could take advantage of the sell-off, for example, uh, to, look, to buy some more uh, JD Sports, for example, a company with outstanding fundamentals. Uh, I think that what this, has done hopefully for everybody is that it, it's it's in fact uh, crystallized the need for a trading plan so that when these markets are moving aggressively that you've pre-planned in your own mind what you're going to do. Just remember uh, to make a, a good success of the stock market there's many things. The first thing are beliefs, positive beliefs about the market, a process and then at the end we have luck, good luck and bad luck coming in and uh, uh, that good luck or bad luck needs to be managed uh, so and then at the at the tail end of it we have the outcome all right so um, uh, I believe that it's too early to buy in uh, to stocks as yet okay hello Bob Uh, Bob, that's a good question. Bob says, is it, is it too late to get out? Oh, Bob, I can't answer that easily, sir. If I had a crystal ball, I would. Uh, I, I think that these markets will bounce uh, soon, uh, but I, 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 I... It's not in cash because the shares haven't hit their stop loss, uh, Michael. Okay. Uh, Andrew says maybe Bob you should be thinking of hedging rather than getting out by SUK2 and I'm hoping to have a, a young man from uh, Oxford come to talk about hedging uh, in the next uh, month or so. Rob uh, from Oxford or Oxford user group sent me a very interesting document on hedging. Okay so John, uh, hello John, I look forward to seeing you on uh, on uh, Wednesday night. SUK2, John says, and 3GOL, John says. John, a very experienced man who runs our uh, Guildford uh, user group. Uh, Chris says that the S&P is down 7% in 50 minutes. Yeah, that's that overnight move, uh, Chris, uh, just happened. Uh, the futures uh, was down uh, very uh, much, much in a minute after the open. Well, uh, I said that I was watching cable last week. That was my trade of the week last week and cable moving up very strongly off that low. Uh, uh, it was based uh, on my stochastics and this five waves up and three waves back and uh, it uh, broke up this morning. I haven't got the position any longer. I, I closed it out uh, on Thursday, in fact, uh, for about a 250 point gain and I'm waiting now for a pullback. Uh, and I, I think folks at the Euro has made a very important bottom here, the Elliott Wave people, I'm not sure whether this is one or two, whether that's A or B, but what I am reasonably sure of is that we're going to get a nice move up in the Euro, the dollar is going to falter. However, I'm waiting for a pullback first. 
So uh, that's what I'm waiting on this week, uh, uh, and I'm hoping it's going to arrive by Wednesday. A nice pullback in the euro for another two or three hundred points. And if this forex market and all markets have taught me anything, it's that you've got to sit and wait on them, folks. You've got to wait for these plums of opportunity to come along. And doing nothing is much, much more difficult than it would seem. Uh, uh, it could be either, Dan says. You're quite right. It could be either. Uh, but I I'm expecting a, a nice run up in the euro. It might come back first. Uh, I think so, uh, Edward. Uh, Edward is explaining the uh, background on that in terms of the euro carry trades. Uh, so based on that, Ed thinks that that would be a C wave up probably. Uh, but uh, I did very well in it last week. Uh, and I sat and waited for it uh, for a long time. That's the euro and that's this morning. I would expect this to pull back here and have another little go. Uh, that pull back probably three to five days with any luck. The US market folks, again, uh, the shortest term measure, the medium term measure, and the long term measures all down. Uh, uh, Steve says that to short the market, if you want to hedge one MCS, what's the liquidity like on that, uh, Steve? One MCS, I don't know it. Uh, so uh, there is uh, the uh, composite and as you can see uh, the uh, confirmed call uh, based on the uh, based on the buy sell ratio uh, and the two week uh, rule didn't do nearly as good a job as we had in the UK uh, this is where we are and as you know uh, this market will have in fact broken this low and it can go uh, an awful lot further down folks Steve says the liquidity on uh, FTS uh, one MCS has been good enough for him. That's great. Uh, so uh, where's this? There's the DEW did a much better job in the US. And again, folks, when the market is trending like the US market has been, the DEW does an incredibly good job. If the market goes into a knot, uh, then uh, it's it's a bugger. It just gives buy and sell signals. Anything with moving averages uh, that has got uh, uh, when the market goes sideways will drive you to drink. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is no divergence on this yet. Uh, when you get wide range bars, the volatility in here last week was incredible. I looked at, uh, for example, the Dow, I'll show it to you in a second. I looked at the Dow and uh, I had to stand aside because uh, it took a, a 500 point stop loss to keep you in a five minute trade. So uh, I just decided to stand aside. Uh, and uh, leave it. Uh, uh, Tim tells us the S&P is uh, uh, being halted. Yes. Very difficult, John. Very difficult to find an inverse uh, ETF with decent liquidity in the UK for a decent sized position that you can hedge. That's the Dow. Uh, and uh, the Dow uh, uh, clearly has down below this level at the moment. That's my 16 day moving average. Uh, I traded this little bit, but I didn't get back into it here. I should have sold it there and I didn't, I didn't, uh, my clot. Uh, so, uh, and that's the Dow at 10 o'clock this morning. And that's uh, a few minutes ago. And uh, as Tim says, uh, the trading was halted in this particular area. So it uh, would have been, I was looking at this last night or yesterday afternoon, I felt that that was a very good level to short it, but this bar happened in a few seconds. So, uh, hi Eli. John, that would be great. And I can circulate those next uh, Monday afternoon. I can, I'll have more time next Monday afternoon. Uh, maybe we can discuss them on Wednesday, sir. There's the SPX, folks. That, uh, and uh, uh, that was the situation until last week. The February the 28th low was a 78% retracement of this. It looks to me, Diane, that this is A, and that was B, and we've got the C to come. And my word, this 127 of that is starting to look, in fact, very plausible. And that's 2600 in the S&P. And that becomes more plausible in the next chart because you can see that from this move, 
from the low in December, where we were cutting our risks exactly the same as we are now, that low in December, uh, in fact, that 78% of that is sitting right on top of the 127 of this. So in terms of a FIB confluence, that looks, and also, Diane, that leg and this leg would be the same length. So, folks, I, I think that... Uh, to answer Bob's question, that there is a possibility that we can get down relatively quickly to 2600 on the S&P. I'm hoping that will not be the case, but it's certainly a, a, a strong possibility, 2600 on the S&P. With any luck, that'll stop it. Uh, Rob says it's uh, 2760, where it's been, in fact, stopped. So we're, we're getting there. Uh, we're somewhere about here, Rob tells me before it was stopped. So uh, my, my, I think the next stop for this, folks, is 2600. All right, 2600. I said two weeks ago that uh, we were going to have to make some incredibly difficult decisions. I didn't think they were going to be this difficult, but uh, that's the biggest and highest velocity sell-off since the Lus Lusitania was sunk. Uh, and uh, this uh, extra leg down. Diana, I don't know what you think of my count here, but this, uh, I think this leg down has already started to about here, and that FIB support will come in at about 2,600. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, uh, that uh, is not easy to say. That's my US positions, none. Uh, gold, uh, I have no idea what's happening, folks. Uh, it, it, it's not responding uh, at all. In this leg up, there was three legs. I would expect a little bit back, but I have no idea. Honestly, it does, it's not talking to me at all. That was gold this morning. Spiked up, ran, uh, stops, and it's now coming back down again. Uh, and oil, of course, uh, that was earlier on. We're right back to this uh, 2008 low. This is a monthly chart. Uh, this pullback to here, and we're right back on that support again. Uh, as you can see, it took quite a long time. It took three months for that support, <coughs> that change. It took three months for this change. So, folks, there's no uh, hurry. Uh, <coughs> if you're interested in those RDS uh, Royal Dutch Shell Bs, I think it's probably a good level. They've sold up uh, very strongly this morning, uh, but uh, it's, go it's going to be uh, two or three months before the dust settles there. So I don't think there's any hurry to do anything. Uh, just remember the next date, and somebody please remind me, but the next date for a dividend is still six weeks to two months away. So I don't think there's any necessity, and I got a thousand emails over the last couple of weeks as to whether we should be buying RDS uh, Bs at 16 pounds or not. And uh, I said that it was far, far, far too early. Uh, and we had a young man at the show a couple of weeks ago wanting to buy them, and I hope I convinced him not to because uh, he were taking a hiding. And I have a friend of the city uh, who wrote puts on this John Graham uh, and uh, lost a million quid on Friday uh, based on that. So, uh, and he got out before today. We'd have lost an awful lot more. So um, is it May? Thank you, Edward. The last date uh, to uh, register for the next dividend, um, in fact, uh, is uh, uh, in May, Ed Jones tells us. Uh, so uh, that's great, sir. Thank you. Very kind of you. Uh, no, Julian says that. Uh, thank you, Julian. Uh, and uh, clearly, as Ed points out, uh, Ed, a very experienced man, uh, points out that uh, uh, cheap oil is going to take the wind out of the sails. Beautifully put, Ed, uh, of alternative energy stocks, for sure. For sure. This volatility is scary, folks. And uh, those of you that are going to try and uh, trade it, uh, well, your entries need to be really pristine to get away with it. Where the stop loss, uh, like a number 27 bus this morning, I was asked, is it too late to short oil? I assure you, it can go lower, much lower down to here. But I guarantee the sod will spike up first to that low and then go down. Uh, so it's not a question of should you short it, it's a question of where are you going to put your stop loss so you get away with the trade. And my advice to you is to sit and watch it and do nothing and let this uh, uh, knife uh, just settle. Uh, I think that you need to watch stops very carefully. I think you need to be very strong in the next few days uh, because uh, – but 
hopefully when the S&P gets to 2600, uh, then it'll stop. Dr. Lido still says we're in a bull market uh, environment, uh, and that's good enough for me. Uh, the uh, virus fears, uh, Christian from Denmark says that things are being closed across there. Uh, we were at the Holiday Inn in Bloomsbury on Saturday, and the food and beverage manager, who I know well there, uh, told me that the hotel's been open for 10 years, and last weekend was their lowest occupancy in all of those 10 years. People cancelling trips left, right, and centre. Even trips that had been paid for in advance were cancelled. So, uh, uh, so I... I, I I'm going to hand over now uh, to Steve, uh, who's going to talk about how to prepare uh, and wait and use a momentum indicator uh, to actually find uh, opportunity in these markets. So let me um, do my best to do that. All right, so uh, let me find Steve. Steve is from our Oxford user group uh, and uh, a very experienced trader indeed. So if I can just find him here. So a lot of people in the room this afternoon. Ah, here we are. So Steve, uh, I'm going to uh, right click now and uh, make you the presenter, sir. And uh, then you've got uh, uh, 35 minutes uh, odd uh, to uh, give us your presentation. I listened to the presentation uh, in um, Oxford and I was incredibly impressed with it. So just to introduce Steve, uh, Steve spent his youth building military aircraft and space projects, no less. And then he had a complete change of heart and uh, rather than uh, getting rid of lives, he's now curing lives because he's been in health products for the last 20 years. And over the last four or five years, he's been trading FX and indices and uh, building up his knowledge of the stock market. He is a, uh, I, I, I go try and go to as many of the Oxford user groups as I can, and I've never seen a miss one. Uh, so a knowledge, very knowledgeable, short-term to medium-term trader. Steve, we're looking forward to your presentation, so let me just do this now. Make a presenter. And uh, Steve, you should see that big box, and you should be able to speak to us now, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, there we go. I'm going to mute right. my uh, 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 mic now, Steve, so there's no sort of uh, to and fro. All right, and I'll answer. Uh, I'll make a note of questions as they come in. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can all hear me clearly. Um, this presentation is about a medium-term swing trade using the R240. Um, it shows the relationship between the vector vest RT40 indicator and price action when the RT40 is charting a lower low. Risk is always a factor to consider before executing a trade. Risk to reward ratio is or should be uppermost in our mind. When this technique was first noted, risk was the main point and not to dwell on the reward so much. By using the vector vest proprietary RT40 indicator at a certain point, potential risk will be lowered and the reward will increase. There are other pieces of technical analysis to use alongside the RT40, which will be shown further on in this presentation. What is the RT40? Well, the RT40 indicator is a 40 day average of the vector vest RT relative timing. A part of the vector vest set of computational metrics that most, if not all, subscribers will be familiar with. A 40 day average, therefore, gives a smoothing of the timing and eliminates any noise within the indicated chart. The RT40 is typically used in the Midas touch search along with the 10 and 65 average of the vector vest stop loss. When the 10 crosses up through the 65 and when the 40 moves up through 1 in the median line, this is considered to be a buy signal. The RT40 risers technique does not specifically use the 10 and 65 averages of the vector vest stop loss, nor does it use the median line on the RT40 indicator chart. The RT40 risers is simply looking for a lower low on the RT40 indicator chart. Many vector vest users that use the Midas Touch watch list would have trained their eye on the indicator that is rising up through the median line 
together with a 10 crossing through the 65 for a possible entry. And the RT40 riser technique, all you're looking for is for the RT40 turning up and making a low bottom from the previous one and not waiting for the indicator to rise through the median line together with the 10 and 60 10 and 65 crossover. This is this allows you to render a train much earlier. Let's have a look at some charts. Impact chart of the lower low on the RT40 chart, 5th of December 2019. RT40 was at 0.87 with entry at 169 spot 50. A crossover entry was a little bit higher at 213 spot uh, 69. Chart group chart of the RT40 low on the 5th of September 2019. The RT40 noted a price of uh, a number of 0.9.79 at 738.50. 10 and 65 crossover with the RT40 rising through one is at 9.35. AFHP chart of the RT40 low on the 17th of October. The RT40 was at 0.77, which is down here. Entry price was at 271. Crossover entry was at 311. There. 22nd of July 2019, countryside properties chart in RT40, low point of 0.85. Entry price was at 294. Crossover entry price was at 324. The RT40 low does not have to be below the median line using this technique for possible market entry. Lion Trust chart an RT40 low, which was above the median line on the 17th of October 2019. It charted a, a number of 1.07. EDL chart an RT40 low on the 17th, 17th of December 2019. Um, the RT40 number there was 1.05. Reach PLT charted an RT40 low on the 5th of December 2019. The RT40 was 1.14. Uh, Additional entry criteria. As with any trade execution, we look for further evidence that will strengthen, strengthen our decision making that will give an edge and a higher probability for a positive outcome. Evidence of technical analysis at the action zone, which is the area that charts the RT40 lower low formation, will be a huge positive, like divergence, descending wedge, compression, the Wyckoff spring, and candlestick analysis. And let's not forget rising EPS. Let's have a look at some charts. Look at MPAC again. For those traders that are well versed with divergence, and this example, and in this example, reverse divergence. Take a look at the same charts before, but with divergent lines on the price chart. You can see here we've got the action zone, which is where the lower low took place. And then you've got a rising price there, higher making a higher high. Steve, could you, Steve, uh, you broke up there going through that last one. Could you uh, go back right. to that last one again? I think people will like that. And uh, just, I know it's really, really difficult, but uh, just focus on, on on staying in front of the mic if you could. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know, I know it's difficult uh, from practice. I assure Is you. Is that better? Is that better? Uh, for those traders that are well versed with divergence, and maybe maybe shout a little bit as well. Uh, uh, okay. I know you're, right. I know you're quiet. I know you're quietly spoken, sir, but. Uh, uh, maybe if you just shout a little bit as well. Uh, uh, many of our members are long in the tooth and they won't be able to hear you, you know. Uh, okay, reverse, okay. Reverse divergence, Ted. Uh, take a look at the same chart as before, but with the divergent lines on the price chart. And you can see the divergent lines there, folks. Uh, MPAC again. Now look at the technical analysis criteria within the action zone. To make our case for entry even stronger. Note that price action is charting a descending wedge. You can see the technical analysis in there uh, within that action zone. 
EGL charted not only an RT40 lower low, but also reverse divergence, a Wyckoff spring as the RT40 low was printed, a bullish hammer candle and rising EPS, all boxes ticked, and the evidence in price action proved this. You can see the reverse divergence there, rising EPS within the action zone, and the Wyckoff spring together with a hammer candle. Bolex charted an RT40 lower low, textbook descending wedge in the action zone and rising EPS, although slightly ragged. You will note that the absence of reverse divergence on this chart. This just shows that this is not a must to execute such a trade for the RT40 riders. So with impact, we had a um, three bullish points, RT40 charting a lower low, reverse divergence, and the descending wedge. Although there was no uh, uh, candlestick analysis on the chart with impact, like a hammer or a morning star formation. All of these, which greatly increases our case for entry and lowers the risk whilst increasing the reward. You will note that the recommendation is a hold on impact. When these examples were presented to the Oxford User Group in January, they were gone from the top bunch of stocks, VST descending just as a way of gathering examples to present. So they were from the top list of stocks with the best numbers. These stocks were entered into a spreadsheet with a set of figures like the date entry price and RT40 figures, but also what recommendation was indicated at the time of entry. And in the majority, entry point recommendation was a hold. To give uniform entries and exits, entry price was entered by hovering across their at the lowest point on the RT40 to give the data. Let's look at MPAC again. The price was noted on the vertical line as, as the number at the RT40 low point. And you can see there it's a 0.87. And the price was at 169 spot 50. Exit. Exit was always going to be subjective, but for the examples presented to the to the user group. A Fibonacci 1.618 extension was used, and the risk to reward ratio was calculated on that basis. Each market has its own nuances to consider, but from what was observed from, the, from this technique and analyzing the charts, price action was very bullish after the RT40 low was formed and showed very little downside. So it would only seem wise to let the market run as empirically proven. And what was also noted was the vector vest valuation. In many instances, the vector vest valuation was way above price action, so it positively added to the decision to let the market keep on charting new highs. Additionally, the RT40 was rising too for further confirmation. Stop loss. A modest 10% stop loss was used in all examples, so the risk to reward could be calculated. What was surprising was that almost all markets never hit their stops before the 1.618 target. Some did pull back shortly after entry and did come close to clipping their stops, but few hit them. This gave great confidence to the technique to just let the market run without any real fear of being stopped out. This was re very reassuring and in many stocks, a smaller stop could have been used, eight or even 6% without being this could have increased, or would have increased your risk to reward ratio substantially. Let's look at MPAC again. There's the 1.618. Entry was at here, and at this point here, it's absolutely tore up the page. MPAC produced a 5.5 to 1 risk reward ratio with a FIB extension, a 1.618 FIB extension. And if the market was allowed to continue to the 2.618, then a risk reward would have been 8.18 to 1. The third extension was drawn from the high to the low point of the action zone. Many vector vest subscribers will be familiar with this technique of plotting a bid level. Let's just look at MPEG again. So there was the 1.618, and there's the 2.618. Countryside properties produced a 3.1 to one risk reward ratio at the FIB extension. The vector vest valuation is way above price action. The RT40 was rising, so it would have been wise to let the market continue. But of course, there will be pullbacks. AHG charted a descending wedge 
at the RT40 low, but as you can see, price action was not so linear. But as the trade would have been executed at the low point, you would have stayed with it as it rose. You will note many fit traders in this market as it crept up the page to 786 and 618, pulling back to a textbook trend line. EPS steadily rising to two. Uh, the vector vest value rising as price rises is always a good sign. Just look at that. You can see the action zone there. Descending wedge. Um, you would have entered around about here. Feel these fit pull back right to a coming back to a, a very good trend line there, and the vector vest valuation was rising too. KNOS chart is a reverse divergence. There wasn't any other distinct technical analysis on the chart, and the stock was overvalued, but still raced up the page despite being on a sell recommendation when executed. It produced a risk reward ratio of a whopping 9.97 to 1 at the third extension. Trade time was from 26 October to 23rd of Jan, and the, uh, the FIB was hit. See it there. It's actually on a sell recommendation. The EPS was rising. Got a reverse divergence in there. Got a few down days. Stocks that were stopped out. Of course, there will be stocks that get stopped out using any system or methodology. And in the essence of fairness, here are the ones that did hit their 10% stops. In the first list that was charted looking for the RT40 examples from the top VST 100 stocks, 46 gave RT40 lower lows to present. Out of those 46, only two hit their stops. CHG charted uh, it was entry at 158.8, therefore stop at 142.92. Market hit a low point of 139.50 before reversing and going back up. But given the deep RT40 lower low and the RT40 rising, even though price action was falling, it would have managed to stop a bit lower. Yeah, there, that was the entry point. The stock was here, um, but it just kept on crashing. NEXS, entry point 135, stop at 121.50. Market hit a low of 101.5 before going back up quite rapidly after being stopped out. But I guess when you look at this chart, you perhaps wouldn't have taken this, this market because it looked quite horrendous, but uh, I had to put it in there because it, it came in with a list of uh, 100 EFT stocks. RT40 rise of formation period. You have now seen how well this method works. The charts don't lie in order to numbers. We'll take a few percentage. The RT40 rise of formation from a low, lower than the previous low, does take time to form. These are not five minute charts and time frames. Typically, it takes a couple of months to a year or even longer to see a formation. However, they do form in shorter periods that can still be very effective in predicting bullish momentum. Have a look at some charts. AVG, this took just one month. Stock charted reverse divergence and reverse and rising EPS in the action zone. You can see the, the lower low there. And the reverse divergence. Caledonia Mining charted an RT40 riser, which took two months to form. It also charted additional entry criteria with great results. The lower low was not a typical formation. It was much shallower than the other examples here, but just as bullish. You can see that. It does take a bit of training to uh, familiarize yourself with these, uh, these low points. Team 17 took six weeks to form. The reverse divergence is confluence for an entry case. The earnings per share was flat, but still price action proved to be good. Price, uh, the, the earnings per share was just flat there, but it, it still moved. Boohoo took one month to form out with reverse divergence and rising EPS. The stock still rose from a shorter time frame riser. You can see it there, that's just one month. Earnings per share was rising. We've got reverse divergence there. 8HT took eight months to form if you take a longer look back. 
there were shorter lower lows in between. But if you want to reverse divergence on the chart, be present as a case for entry, then it took a while. You can see this here. AFHP took one year to form in conjunction with reverse divergence. There were shorter lower lows within that one year. SDI took 14 months to form, but was well worth waiting for. Just as a matter of observation, there was a much shorter driver, which predicted a stronger bullish move. And there it is there. There's a little bit of compression going on there on the technical analysis, but uh, it was a lower low there. For short to medium term swing trading technique, the RP40 riser seems to do a very good job. With entering the market at a low point, aided by the RT40 indicator, with other technical analysis alongside, but not necessary, it has a very high positive outcome when managed correctly. How do we find these stocks? Our original search was created trying to find where the RT40 made a, a, a bottom and then started to turn up, as you can see here. You've got to catch it as it starts to move. The idea being to plot the low point of the bottom of, by plotting the higher points of the bottom, bottom either side, and thus you have the center low. At least then the uni search could return all possibilities that met the search criteria, and then you just have to select the ones that fit the formation or part formation. But this upturn could appear on any part of the RT40 curve. Most RT40 formations are generally smoothish in appearance. Some RT40 curves are not so smooth looking, and therefore the upturn or part rounding bottom can take position on any part of the curve, like in Avon. And this is not ideally what we want to search the search to return, as you can see there. The search was then executed and returned surprisingly few contenders, so not being trusting of what the criteria was used in the in the uni search, the decision was made manually go through every stock on the London Stock Exchange. Visually, just to test the search did its job. And as of today, the uni search returned just one stock. We put it there, it was about a week ago, but when I uh, finished this PDF off. Um, the kind of search return that would fit the perfect trade would be HGM in an ideal world. And you can see there, as the market came down, it's just, just making a lower low there. That's, that's what you're looking for. As the entire list of stocks was manually looked at, VST descending 100 to 200 and 200 to 300, etc. Right the way down the list, it became evidently clear that the deeper down this list of stocks, the weaker they became, and the strength in the downtrend, top left to bottom right, steadily negated any benefit of the RT40 riser method. Not totally, but largely. Some stocks did chart the lower low on the RT40 and price action went bullish, but only for a very short time. Therefore, it would have been considered very unwise to trade such stocks. Strong downtrends, widespreads, illiquidity, etc. Although the task of searching the entire LSE was exhaustive, it was worthwhile because it demonstrated beyond a doubt that the RT40 rise method worked well but only with best performing stocks that are pulled back. Obvious when you think about it, but very important information nonetheless. Latest search today. So we now have a firm picture of how this method works. Collating the stocks to consider trading is done by using the search criteria below. In a previous webcast, a fellow Oxford user group member presented a superb system using the EPS as a main driver in his excellent method. After he had performed an extensive search and testing process by way of VST, RT, RS, CI, RV, and GRT descending plus combinations of those uh, me vector best metrics, it was decided to construct a search based on EPS King base search. This was his uh, typical search. But with an added line of RT40 less than 0.99 to search the stocks where a possible RT40 riser would be below the RT40 line of one. 
So as you can see, I can put in a, an additional line of code at the bottom there, 9.99. Another search where possible, RC4 divisors would be above the one line. So as you can see there, instead of having 0.99, it was 1.01 .01 to 1.1. .1, so that would be above the median line of one. This number can be can be adjusted to 1.2, 1.3, etc. These two searches prove to be the best way of garnering a selection of stocks to consider trading, because you want the best performing stocks that have just pulled back and are still fundamentally good. You can use GRT to, times RT to send to sort. When the search returns possible candidates, this does not necessarily uh, mean that uh, they are ready to be traded immediately, but they are to be entered into a watch list until they are ready to go. Uh, and at the time of I was running this search, Ab Dynamics proved to be one. Well, I know things have changed since, um, but uh, at the last meeting at Oxford, this had actually risen by about seven percent. I think it was as one of the members noted. RWS Holdings was just a slight lower low there, and you can see it just kicking up at the bottom. Um, I don't know what it's doing today. Maybe had not started a lower low on the RT40, but it's worth watching us. There could be reverse bullish divergence should the RT40 continue to fall. ARTL, the search was above the median line of one. It can be traded, albeit, but a bit late. You can see it there. I believe this is pulled, pulled back a bit. And it was a stock I was watching at the time. Greencoat UK is also worth watching. Slight reverse divergence taking place there, you can see. Conclusion. The RT40 writer method has proven its worth, and even more so when technical analysis is used alongside it, with minimal risk and higher reward using a smaller stop loss together with the confidence of proven ability to enter trades or at near bottoms that have been shown within this presentation, it ticks all the boxes for an excellent swing trading technique. That's it. Steve, uh, thanks very much, sir. Uh, I was, uh, I've, I've been more impressed with the, uh, RT40 uh, as a an indicator for divergence than uh, than any other indicator yeah. I've used, and I've been using uh, indicators uh, for a very very long time indeed. In fact, mm -hmm. I was I was so impressed with the darn thing that uh, if I can go to a chart here, uh, any chart, Team 17, I've actually made up a, a, just a simple filter. Uh, 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 or a graph layout, if I can find it, just the RT40 itself. Uh, and I must I, I'm exceptionally impressed with the ability of a, a simple trend line uh, to actually get in considerably faster uh, than, uh, uh, than uh, for example, uh, the uh, two moving averages crossing over. So I use it with divergence. Uh, and uh, that's maybe not the best choice, but uh, let's look at Ecofin here. Uh, uh, and that's, that's exactly what, what we're looking at. I'll just take off my lines at the moment, but uh, so since uh, your presentation in Oxford, uh, uh, that is in fact, uh, uh, what I've been looking for, of course, nobody can see that because my screen is not up. So it's, uh, uh, so I'm being very stupid, I'm afraid. So, uh, any questions for Steve, folks? I've got one coming in. Thanks, Julian. I, I uh, Philip says thank you. Bill, you had a question a moment ago. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, Mark says he loved it. Thank you. Uh, that's Mark from your own user group. Uh,
Alan says he loves it as well. Keith uh, loves it down in Taunton. Uh, Trevor wants to know, can you explain the RT40 lower low again, please? Okay, certainly. Let's go back to a chart. Uh, look at that. Can you see that? Can you see my screen, David? I can see it perfectly, Steve. Uh, if you just shout at us, uh, we'll hear you as well. Uh, uh, there's an RT40 lower low there. Hope you can see that. Let's go down another one. Lower there as well. I hope you can see that. Um, lower low here. Lower than this one. Uh, you're breaking up, I'm afraid. Steve, you're breaking up, I'm afraid. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, much better. Uh, you can see the RT40 lower low there. Uh, this is a longer term one, but uh, you can see it there. And there's, uh, there's also reverse divergence there as well. I mean, market did. So um, this company has had a little bit of a problem, I think, recently we've seen it decline a little bit. But uh, there's the RT40 lower low, and there's a smaller one right there. Okay. And uh, for reverse divergence, Trevor, we would need to see rising lows on uh, the price data and uh, a lower low on the RT40 data. Did I summarize that correctly, Steve? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, I actually learned it from you, David. So. <laughs> uh, I, I keep uh, telling people that uh, reverse divergence is difficult to see, but if you've mastered the reverse divergence, uh, you've got a method of, of working out what's going to happen next with a, a huge uh, degree of probability. And because the RT40 is such a big cycle, uh, it in fact uh, is incredibly accurate so it's much more, more accurate than reverse divergence on the stochastic uh, or, or on the MACD for that matter uh, yeah Tony says do you trade via spread bet or stock purchase um, I buy the underlying asset um, but I don't trade stocks really on the spread bet but I, I use um, um, uh, reverse divergence on on uh, and Bill, Bill in Scotland says, have you found any stocks that continually form good RT40 risers? Um, no, I haven't gone into the search criteria. That, that the, I guess you'd have to take a particular chart and just go back a year at a time. Um, uh, are, you, are you asking that some charts or some markets will just have a habit of doing it, like saying fib traders. You know, fib traders will always, you can always see their patterns there. Um, I guess that's what you're asking. And, and the answer to that is I haven't looked, but um, a simple bit of observation just going back through three years and you can see it, I guess. And that's something I, I would like to look at. Uh, I'd be happy to hook up with anybody who wished to pursue that further. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, uh, Steve, when you see uh, lots of these coming, you give us a shout and we'll have you uh, on here again. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Calvin, that's called reverse divergence. Uh, oh, no. That's, Calvin, that's called normal divergence, sir. Not reverse divergence, normal divergence. Uh, well, as I said uh, earlier, I was so impressed this when I saw it at the Oxford User Group that I put together my own uh, uh, chart layout, which has just got a very, very thick RT40, as uh, thick as I can make it, uh, and mm. just the price. Uh, and when I see reverse divergence on the RT40, and we get a trend, a simple trend line break, in other words, the market's pulling back, and then it breaks a simple uh, trend line, that gives an entry the guts of a month earlier than uh, the 10 and the 65 crossing. So uh, it mm. adds tremendously uh, to being able to get into the stock at a good price. With Because the, the stop loss, Steve, I think you would think if you get in earlier, the stop loss is pretty much the same as if you get in later. <laughs> so uh, yeah. uh, it's quite amazing, actually, because yeah. I, I was just looking for risk, basically. And 
and the 10 percent stop loss was just a, just a round figure i used that and just see how it performed um and it, it was quite amazing really so your risk is minimal yes um, wow. i use this every day now um just just to search and train my eye even further mm. um, I think it's an excellent technique you know i didn't well, it, it, it took me back many years, Steve, because when I was taught the stochastic by George Lane, way back in 1986, that was his methodology. Uh, it was a, a, a stoch over oversold stochastic and a, a trend line break. He didn't, in mm -hmm. fact, know anything about reverse divergence. Uh, uh, and uh, that was only, in fact, uh, thought through much, much later by a guy called Andrew Cardwell. Uh, and I also use the uh, the EPS uh, Mark's uh, previous presentation as well. So they form sort of both of my search strategies now, and uh, I think with the two of them, um, not too bad at all, David. I think you agree. Yeah, uh, it uh, it's a tremendous technique. Uh, it predicts the future. Uh, David says, are you sticking to, uh, yeah, we are, David. We can't move it. It would cause chaos to move it. Mark Cowan himself uh, from our Guildford group. Uh, very interesting yeah. presentation. Do you need to use them? Mark says, are you using any form of market timing? No, uh, I haven't even with that. Um, again, I could do some further research and see how it performed with market up, uh, confirmed up, um, farming wave up or down. 200 day moving average it just it was just purely on this uh on this lower low on the r240 um quite amazing really so you know you could add that in there if you wanted to um, yeah but best, best valuation was, 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 was important to put on the chart as well but uh you know you could add other things in there for, for searching yeah certainly you could yeah, David, I'll see you on Wednesday night with that. Uh, uh, David Atherton up in Manchester or uh, up in uh, Wigan. Uh, I, we couldn't move it, David. Uh, they've all been set up with go to webcast months in advance or, uh, and uh, people have got used to it. Uh, Naska, all we're, all, 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 what we're looking for uh, is uh, uh, the RT40, which Nigel is exactly the same as the RT40 in the Midas Touch search. Uh, we're looking for uh, the price to make a rising low and the RT40 to make a falling low. And then the price confirms by breaking through a down sloping trend line. And uh, Naska, if you have a problem, just email me on that and I'll send you a chart with the greatest of pleasure. Okay. Yeah, the best way to, to get the RT40 on the chart is to go to the Midas Touch. Um, uh, uh, and you can see it there because um, I couldn't find it before and I thought oh my god it's disappeared but it's actually in the RT and the Midas touch chart list uh, the chart configuration and it's there and then you can just put your uh, lines on uh, and as you please from that and just form a um, configuration and use that as a standard okay all right folks uh uh, Steve, uh, once again, thanks very much. When you see lots of these coming and you see the market pulling back uh, and uh, markets tend to be like London taxes, you, 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 you rarely, they rarely come in one, Steve. They come in half dozen at a time. Uh, so um, uh, when you see lots of these happening, give us a shout and uh, uh, we'll get you back on again uh, to talk you through these as, as they come. I'm greatly excited by the uh, amount of knowledge uh, uh, shown at the VectorVest user groups around the country. Uh, the knowledge level has gone of markets and of VectorVest has gone up through the roof over the last few years, and it's very gratifying to see that. Uh, yes. Uh, so, Steve, thanks, thanks very much. I'll see, you, I'll see you next Thursday in Oxford. Uh, this week, okay. folks, we've got Guildford on Wednesday night, uh, and we've got uh, Taunton on Wednesday night. I shall be in Guildford. And then uh, next Monday, we've got the London User Group. And next Thursday, the Oxford User Group. Uh, anybody wants to come along to those, you're not quite sure where, give me a shout and I will, uh, in fact, sort you out. Okay. I'm hoping to be up in Manchester and in Birmingham at the start of next month. All right. Uh, folks, 
these markets, I think, are going to, if you look at the S&P chart, they're going to get to 2,600. I'm hoping that that's going to stop. I suggest that you do your best to bite your tongue, do whatever you have to do to do absolutely nothing apart from watching stop losses and making strong and brave decisions. Uh, uh, even the most aggressive you should wait until the primary wave uh, turns up. Uh, Patrick, it works exceptionally well in US stocks. Uh, Steve, thanks again. Cheers, everyone. Uh, I'll see you all you. Uh, next week. Uh, there's an introductory presentation tomorrow evening. Uh, it is uh, basically an introductory presentation on worry-free trading. Uh, if anybody wants to come along to that, uh, it'd be great to see you, but this is an introductory presentation. Uh, I think, folks, that uh, the best place, best time to get into worry-free trading is probably just approaching in that we're moving into an oversold situation uh, and that will be a good time to start to build a long-term portfolio. Uh, that said, it's been a very difficult two weeks uh, where a very, very brave decisions need to be made. Very brave indeed. Yeah, I see the bo the rand has gone to hell and back, uh, Bodo. I, I'm not sure where it's going to. I haven't looked at the chart again. Uh, folks, take care of yourselves uh, and uh, I'll see you all uh, uh, next Monday, if not before, at the user groups. Bye-bye now.